again that I've got the last image in this set of uh, pictures of Izzy for her portfolio um, that I am creating and just join me while I while I create and edit. So as usual, I'm going to do the background first. First thing I'm going to do is remove that bit where we had a bit of flare coming in. I don't mind flare, but in that instance, I wanted it removed. I'm going to take out any bits on the background that are distracting me. Um, now, I deliberately shot this image at an angle. I want to edit it to be square, I think. Still got to play with that. Um, but I like that she's sort of traveling uh, downhill a little bit, and I want to play with that um, a tiny bit more. I think that's that's quite cool. But there's a, a few things I want to kind of tweak uh, and change onto here. So first thing, let's do the floor. I'm going to duplicate my layer 50% and start softening. And pull that in a tiny bit there, because I think we just need a slightly softer edge to this floor. Um, I'll come back and remove anything that I want removing fully. Sometimes I do that beforehand, but sometimes you've just got to start editing. Do it in whatever order it comes into your head. It's all okay. Everything's fine. I used to panic so much that I was going to forget what to do, what to come back to. I was going to you know, come back and go, oh, I did everything, but I forgot to edit one leg or something like that. It was absolutely insane. Um, and at one point, I just had to sort of say to myself, you're going to remember. As long as you remember to look at the image at the end, it's it's going to be there. You're going to you're going to remember you're going to see it and just add more quality controlling, get someone else to look at it. Um, and I had to just convince myself that that was going to happen. So first thing I want to remove is this label on the shoe. I'm just going to let content aware do its thing. Quite happy with that. That did a good job. I, I don't like cheating things most of the time. I'm quite advocate for doing it yourself, but when it works and it's quicker and you can't tell and the pixels aren't destroyed and there's not an issue with it, pff, do it. Uh, the other bit is this, this is irritating me, this is weird, where um, her arm obviously travels down this section here, but we've, it's dented in, I'm wondering if I can content aware a bit more of that out, uh, it's got a bit smushy and a bit weird, um, I think I, I do want to try and fix that, I'm going to try to add a bit of leather from behind, so I'm going to just copy this bit here, grab it onto its own layer, um, put it in, and if I click Control T, I can transform that. Uh, and drag it around a bit because if I drag it around it's not going to look like I, I copied it too much um, let's pull that into its own section uh, and then quite simply I'm just going to mask it in because that seems the easiest option I tend to do my edges first uh, and then I'll refine these bits but if I do that edge I can get a good grip and just draw that in the reality is this is never going to be seen enough that someone is going to check every little bit of the edge. Um, but actually, if I now just pull out an off and on, that makes me happier. It, I wanted it to be chunky. I wanted it to be ruched. That, that makes more sense. We'll go with that. OK, so uh, let's have a look through. And I'm going to do some hair edit. So using my clone stamp, I'm just going to take off any of those uh, hairs that are a little bit distracting, that pulling from us uh, a tiny bit more. Apart from that, I think we're all good. Uh, and now before I start doing my skin edit, I want to tone this area down a little bit because I want to be drawn to the face mostly. So I've got my uh, burn tool on mid-tones and I'm just going to tap ever so slightly. This isn't contouring, this is just controlling where the light is hitting the highlights. Uh, contouring comes later and before I do any skin edit I'm going to just remove I think I've got a bit of lipstick coming there and I'm just going to take necklines off it's a personal choice but you know what they bug me they bug me because they cut through oops, that's a horrible smudge they cut through the face um, and I think you notice them I do and I just soften them remove them whatever uh, coming from there and this one here, let's take that out. Fabulous, happy with that. Okay, so duplicate my layer four times. First of all, let's do our high pass layer. That's a bit much, let's turn it down a little bit. 
out there where I can just about see the texture, put that on overlay and turn it off. Now let's go into our next layer, go onto our surface blur, and I've got a feeling this is going to be way too heavy. Um, actually, that's, that was nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. Oops. Uh, let's put it just about there. Uh, and I know that's going to be right, so I'm going to hit enter, because you always have to wait for surface blur. It takes its time. Turn this layer back on, and I can now change my surface blur layer to wherever I want it for the skin. Okay, let's group it. Mask it, invert it, and paint it in. That's satisfying though, to just paint over and the skin goes all very glowy and nice. Still keeping every bit of texture. Texture is important. We do not want to make a look too barbified, although very on trend right now. Um, all we're doing is softening. Now, I actually do think that's too soft. So I am going to Go back to my layers, back to my surface blur layer, and turn that softness down a little bit more. Um, and that was just a personal choice. You can go with soft or however you want to go. I'm really not looking at over editing the skin. I'm looking at keeping things very um, natural edit. I am working with uh, Izzy, who's a dancer, um, and she's quite incredible for this because she doesn't have legs completely covered in purple bruises which is what most of my dancers have most of my dancers are, are head to toe just covered in bruises from practice so uh it's quite a delight not to have to edit that off um perfect i think i'm happy with that so i'm going to flatten that and i'm going to now do my contouring layer with my soft light 50 percent so i'm going to follow the light that's already there but i'm going to over contour on that leg i'm going to contour just on anywhere that is naturally hitting the light. And then I'm going to darken the other areas a bit more. Really everything already kind of exists. Do you know what? I want to contour that heel. I like the heel. Let's contour that bright and then darken this bit down. I think that's going to create a nice shape. Let's turn it off and on. Yeah, I've moved that shimmer around a bit, but for that, that's actually quite pleasant. Uh, finally, the face, which, let's face it, I contour that with the lighting. We don't, nothing more. All I'm going to do is go under the jaw a tiny bit, down the neck, and around the cheekbone. And that is kind of all that's needed. I find I have to darken eyebrows a little bit um, with certain makeup products. Sometimes they can reflect the light and look a little bit lighter than what I know they were like in person. Um, so I'll occasionally do that, but again... I'm happy with that. I like it. So before I move on, I think these bits are distracting me. Um, if you saw my last video, you saw that the buttons annoyed me then as well. So I'm going to do the same thing I did then. Put grey on it, put darken on, turn the opacity down and just make it so it's just not hitting as much. This red patch back here is kind of doing the same thing and I was tempted to maybe red it out. Do you know what? I'm actually happy with that because that, that kind of bugged me, that little bit of white. Um, and I might just tone it down a tiny bit. But overall, very happy with that. Let's add a tiny bit more contour into the clothing. I'm happy. Yep, happy with all those. I think that's looking really nice. So let's check my levels. And then I'm going to try a crop because I, I normally do my crops first. If you watch my videos, you know I normally do a crop first. But I, I kind of like the composition of this. Um, so let's see what I think about doing a square crop. I think that would look quite nice. I want to keep it tight. I want to keep her tight in the frame in this instance and quite central. Content aware is on. Let's have a look. Yeah, do you know what? I like it. I like it. All I want to do is I want to darken this right down under here. So I'm just using my midtones and pulling that down. I think we could add a bit of flair, a bit of something interesting. I have a weird technique for doing this. It's just what I like. So I duplicate my layer. I hit Control U for hue saturation. And I up the lightness by a lot. I will then click Control B and choose the colour of flare I want. I don't necessarily want it to be a big colour. I just want it to be some sort of tint. 
Um, and then if needed, depending on the shade, so like reds and purples or like this, I will then turn my saturation down a little bit more so that I haven't got a vibrant purple flare. I've got a slightly muted purple flare. I then turn uh, that onto a mask, invert it, and go into the brush tool on a very big brush. But most importantly, I want my brush on 10%. Because if I have my brush on 10%, I can control where that flare comes from and draw it in. Yeah, there are better ways, easier ways to do this, but I'm a control freak. So I like to control the flare. I know I want it coming from this area and I know I want it traveling down diagonal. So in that corner, I'm going to just hit on my 10%. And you know what, that's nice, I like it, but I'm going to uh, add more to it and I don't want it to be as strong. So I'm going to go to 5%. I'm going to tap the next bits and I'm going to tap slightly over her because a flare would slightly come in front. You can also create that flare coming over the other side but I don't want to on this instance. I'm going to have that flare coming just a little bit there like it's traveled behind her and then back to my corner I'm going to do another one, make my brush smaller, another one, make my brush smaller, another one um, and it just kind of creates a realistic pool of light coming through because light doesn't travel in a perfectly straight line. It bounces around. And I, I like that it bounces. So turning that off and on. A little bit of something flare. I kind of like it. I think it's nice. Um, I think I'm happy. I think I'm, I'm happy with, with that image. Uh, the only thing I kind of like the idea of is maybe looking, I might look at adding a bit of sparkle on the shoe or the necklace, something that really draws our eye. Um, but I haven't got that ready, so I'll go and look and see what I can do there. Uh, but overall, I love it. I think that's looking really nice. Thanks again for joining me. And uh, you can see the full collection on my Instagram. Um, and you can see the rest of the work on the rest of YouTube.